I want to go back to kind of one last housekeeping issue on the on the protein side, which was uh, the difference between whey and casein protein in identical amounts relative to the parameters you've spoken about, digestibility, speed of digestion, and amino acid composition. What are the differences and where do you see the use cases clinically between them? So the digestibility is the same. It's it's 100%. So there's no differences there. But if you ingest uh, a casein versus, and that's micellar casein versus whey protein, the casein is much, uh, sorry, the whey protein is much more rapidly digested and absorbed. You see a greater spike in your uh, free essential amino acid concentrations in your blood, including leucine, and you get uh, a greater stimulation of muscle protein synthesis as a result. However, the longer you measure, the more the casein catches up on the way. That's also something that you have to realize. Yeah. Tell us about that study that you, that just came out a few weeks ago which seemed to challenge a lot of the conventional thinking around the amount of usable substrate that one could ingest. So traditional thinking had been, boy, it's awfully hard to use more than 40 to 50 grams of protein in a meal for muscle protein synthesis. And if I recall, you had three groups in this study, a group that was given zero protein, 25 grams of protein, and 100 grams of protein. Was that, that was all casein, correct? That was milk protein concentrates. It was a milk concentrate. So that means equal parts casein and whey, or what, how, what was the breakdown? Yeah, yeah, that was 80-20. 80-20 in favor of which? Casein is always 80 and whey is 20 in milk. Okay. So if you have milk, about 80% is casein, 20% is whey. Got it. And then tell us what you saw in that study over a long enough period of time. So this was a study where we uh, used that intrinsically labeled protein combined with intravenous infusions of amino acids. And that allows us not only to measure muscle protein synthesis, but also how much protein is actually released in the circulation from what you ingest. And so we could make a full quantitative assessment of what is happening. Now, previously, like I said, uh, most of our studies, people like to work on office hours. So you have two hours of a run-in period, uh, maybe an hour of an intervention, and then four to six hours of postprandial, so after a meal measuring of muscle protein synthesis. So that's, those are long days. So most of the studies so far show that 20 grams of protein does not do better than 40 grams of protein to stimulate protein synthesis for up to four to six hours, because that's typically what we do. Why do we always measure four to six hours? That's all the, all the labs doing this kind of work is because that's the time between two meals. So that makes sense. So the 40 grams always, in if you see the studies and a lot of other labs, we it tends to, to look more than the 20, looks like a greater response than the 20 grams, but it's not significantly different. And what we saw with the intrinsic label protein, that a lot of the protein is not digested yet, or at least not released in the circulation. And the longer you measure, the more of that protein still is still coming in. Same with what I said, the casein is catching up on the way because a lot of the casein is not absorbed yet. So what Jorn wanted to do, and this was crazy because he wanted to ingest 100 grams of protein. To be honest, he's so crazy, he actually wanted to have more treatments. And I said, it's not going to happen because that's way too expensive. And this was already very expensive. <laughs> so we did a zero, 25 is what is being advised, give or take. And then the 100 gram as an absolutely impractical amount. And so we actually measured, um, if I'm correct, at 4, 8, and 12 hours after the ingestion. And so what you saw is that if you measure for an extended period of time, that 100 gram is still increasing muscle protein synthesis for a longer period of time, resulting in a greater response over time. So the suggestion that you can't get a greater response with more protein is biased. It's biased because you don't measure long enough. Now, the problem is this is a study that everybody, at least in my field, needed to see. So to, to better understand what is happening, but it doesn't necessarily translate. And of course, that's the problem now with, with papers. People start calling me, like interview this, interview that. Like, should I eat one meal a day? No, that's not what we're saying. I still think that it's good to have a distribution of protein throughout the day, that every meal has an anabolic response. But it doesn't mean if you have small meals that you're going to disappear in three weeks. 
So the body adapts. And if the body has a huge meal, it's still being huge, used. Makes sense because if you have a, we also wrote that in the discussion, if you have a snake or a crocodile that once in so many days devours uh, a goat or a chicken or whatever, then it can actually see that that animal actually stuck in the gut for, for weeks and it's actually consuming it. Now, to some extent, humans can also do that. So it just shows you that the response, there's no limitation in the response, and it can actually do, uh, range longer than what is previously expected. Do you think if you did that experiment, but instead of using um, a milk concentrate, which was majority casein, you used a pure whey isolate, do you believe that you would have still seen muscle protein synthesis at the 12 hour mark? Or do you think that the rapid digestibility of whey would have changed the kinetics significantly and you would have been largely done at the four to six hour mark? Yeah, good, good question. But I think that um, the differences, I think the difference between the 25 and the 100 grams might have been smaller, mm -hmm. but it would still be evident because then the duration of the extension is, is smaller, of course, with the whey than with micellar casein. But the comparison with milk is very small because, I mean, milk still is very rapid. I mean, it's always funny that people say, like, this is slow or this is, this is, this is fast. I mean, casein, It's all relative. Whey, it's all milk, relative, yeah. It's, it's all very fast. It's all concentrated proteins. Yeah. If you compare it with full meals, you get a completely different picture. Yeah. And that's what Philippe, uh, Philippe Pinkarts in our group did. He compared the real meal, a vegan meal versus a typical Dutch. I'm not even allowed, uh, know whether I'm still allowed to say that. Typical meal was actually in Holland, vegetables, potatoes, and a piece of meat. Now, we made those two plates having exactly the same energy and exactly the same amount of protein. But now we also have that digestibility factor in there because we weren't using powders in a drink. We actually have a full meal, a plate with all vegan whole foods and a plate with a piece of meat and, and potatoes and, and, and some, some and, veggies. And was the vegan plate, uh, was it cooked protein or was it raw? Yes, it was cooked protein. Okay. And, but it has more, a little bit more fiber. Yep. The plate is also a little bit bigger because the, 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 prote the, the energy density is, of course, smaller. And then everything comes together also with the digestibility. And then you actually saw no measurable anabolic response with the vegan meal, and you saw a massive anabolic response, muscle protein synthetic response with the uh, omnivorous meal. And that shows you that, I mean, and I'm, that doesn't mean before everybody just stack us again, that I say that you shouldn't be eating vegan. But the point is that an omnivorous meal with animal derived proteins has a greater response when you compare it in an amount the same amount matter, the same amount of protein. So quality counts. Let's go back to what you talked about with respect to, yeah, we, we completely talk about the relative speed between whey and casein, but let's put those in the context of a meal. So how does, what does the kinetics curve for a casein shake look like compared to ground beef or whole steak? Is it significantly faster? No, that's 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 similar. Cooked beef is is is. I mean, it's still very fast. So if you have cooked uh, cooked uh, meat or um, um, concentrated protein isolate from an animal source, it's all very rapidly digested and absorbed with peak amino acid levels. I think between thirty and say seventy five uh, minutes. If you have a, a full meal with uh, potatoes, veggies, fibers, and in it, it will take two to three hours longer. Thank you.